Hey everybody, Fett here from Azalea Studios in Nashville to give you a little bit of an overview of my recording turbocharge program. Got myself a little case of laryngitis here, so hopefully I'll get through this okay, but I'll try to speak clearly enough so you can still hear what's going on. This is a six-week intensive program that it takes place entirely online. It's got more than 10 hours worth of video in it, and basically I go through the entire recording process on the front end. So I focus on the front end recording techniques and not the back end of mixing and mastering. And the reason for that is there's so much to cover here in this, this area alone uh, that I wanted to make sure that we could go to the level of depth that we really need to to bring out some of these great recording tips and techniques and things I've learned over th more than 30 years worth of recording. So the format is there are 12 modules over the course of six weeks. And those modules are released each week online. And uh, there are a number of uh, handouts and various things you can download and exercises and what have you that go along with them. And we also have group calls, live calls, where you can do Q&A with me to talk about the materials for the week that we've covered and anything else that might be on your mind. So week one is the introduction and studio setup and environment week. And what I do here is set the stage uh, with the first two modules for everything that's going to follow for the following five weeks. So module one is called setting the stage and creating the benchmark recording. It's got more than an hour of video and it's mostly a PowerPoint presentation. But before I do that, I take you on a brief tour of our virtual HQ for the program here at Azalea Studios in Nashville and talk about a lot of the aspects of the studio environment by illustrating them through the program here at Azalea. And in my PowerPoint presentation, I go through a little discussion about the history of home and project studio recording and how we got here. And I also talk a little bit about some of the pro secrets and busting some myths and other favorite sayings that I have about the recording process to sort of give you an idea of where I'm coming from philosophically. And part of that is to introduce my clean recording philosophy. This is the concept that kind of runs through the entire program and it's sort of the basis for my approach for recording. And then I talk about your first assignment, which the, is the benchmark recording, which is going to be where you judge your starting point from going forward with all the techniques that you learn through the program. In module two, which is still part of the first week, I talk about specifics of studio setup and environment. That's more than a half an hour of video. And I go over things like electrical considerations, uh, power, safety, problems like hum, electrical interference, that kind of thing. I also talk about positioning and calibrating your monitors, which is very, very important to know what it is that you're listening to when you're recording. And then I talk a little bit about some of the creature comforts of the studio, uh, and I particularly focus on seating, uh, which is something that seems to be a big problem for a lot of people uh, with back problems and that kind of thing. So I go into some specifics on that. And in the process of those videos, I show you uh, some of the gear that's associated with the things I'm talking about. So that takes care of week one. Now in week two, we get into the meat of the matter very, very quickly and very deeply. Week two is all about microphones and gain staging. And module three, uh, which is the first module in week two, is all about microphones. And this is me talking for more than an hour about everything you could imagine about microphones. I talk about the different designs of microphones, a dynamic, condenser, and ribbon and explain what they are and how they vary from each other, what their strengths and weaknesses are. I talk a lot about the affordable mic revolution that's been taking place over the last 10 or 15 years. And then I go specifically into mic features. I'm talking about things like polar patterns, the pad or attenuation switch, the low frequency switch, also known as the high pass filter or the low cut. And then I start talking about some phenomena that are endemic to specific types of microphones, which are going to have a lot to do with getting the right sound when we're recording things. So I talk about things like proximity effect and off-axis rejection and other aspects of mic placement. I also talk a little bit about things like USB mics and a little bit of features about some specific models. In fact, I go through more than 40 specific microphones that I talk about in this particular module. And then there's some exercises, some homework, and some downloadable lists of all the mics that I talk about in the module so that you can have it handy at home in your, or in your studio. 
But we're not done yet with week two. Module four, which follows the mic module, is gain staging and level setting. And this is over a half an hour of video. And gain staging is one of those topics that is super, super critical to getting a really good recorded sound and one of the things that people hardly ever talk about. So I go into great detail on this and I explain what gain staging is and why it's so important to the process. And then I go into the actual illustration of how to set optimal levels, which is what this whole topic is about. I start out with some diagrams to kind of give you an idea of signal flow and all the different places where gain staging and level setting might come into play in your recording setup of your gear. I do the actual setting of levels in a live demo. I've got some software and a microphone and uh, some front end gear like a compressor and a preamp, some DAW software, and I run it you right through the process there live on the computer and explain the right way to get the levels at every one of those steps. And then we wrap up with some homework for you to use at home. So that takes care of week two. On to week three. Now that we've got our sort of fundamentals knowledge down, the basis for everything we're going to need to record specific things from here on out. So week three is all about recording guitars and bass. And module five, which is the first module in week three, we talk about recording guitars, both acoustic and electric, with more than an hour of video. I go through some general guidelines of preparation and uh, mic setting and mic selection, which is very important, finding the sweet spot, to where to put the microphones and that applies both to acoustic guitars as well as to electric guitar amps and then I talk about some other gear settings like preamps and EQs and that kind of thing and I give you some additional pro tips for recording both acoustic and electric guitar and then we wrap up with a homework assignment again so that's module five all about recording guitars and immediately after that we have recording bass that's recording electric bass acoustic bass and upright bass it's about a half an hour worth of video, and I talk about where to place the microphone on bass amps through a live demo that I conduct on the screen. And I give some other tips about recording bass for acoustic, electric, and upright as well. And then we wrap up with some homework. So week three is all about guitars and bass, and there's lots and lots of juicy material in there for you to try at home. All right, so we're only halfway through the program, but that brings us to week four. And Module 7 is the entire week, and that is all about recording vocals. And it's a very, very intensive, extensive module in the program, most people's favorite along the way. And I start out with some vocal mic recommendations and a little pop quiz. And then I go into a pretty extensive discussion about accessories, things like pop filters and so forth. And then I give some tips on recording preamps, and compression and EQ with vocals and I talk about prep and session tips for recording vocals. I've been fortunate enough to learn an awful lot from working with demo singers uh, here in Nashville over the last 20 almost 25 years and they have really taught me a lot from a singer's perspective about the best way to prepare for and set up for a session and then I actually go through uh, setting up for a singing demo and recording performance tips and techniques and then I make some distinctions between recording lead vocals and backing vocals. And then I give what I call a crash course in vocal tuning. I'm not a big fan of vocal tuning. I recommend trying not to use it if you can do that. But if it's necessary, and sometimes it is, I give you the process that I go through for using vocal tuning the most effectively. And then we end up with a homework assignment. So that's all about vocals. Plenty of things to learn and plenty of things to try out on your own. Week five is all about keyboards, and we're talking about recording acoustic piano and also electronic or MIDI keyboards with more than an hour of video. And I start out with acoustic piano, and I talk a lot about miking specifics, a mic placement on the piano. There are a lot of different options we've got there, and there are also some very interesting products out there for recording keyboards, and I go into some detail on those. And I'm gonna take you a live, through a live demo of miking a piano. And I also talk a little bit about phase cancellation and the three to one rule, which is very important when you're stereo miking things, particularly something like a piano where you've got a lot of distance between the microphones on such a large surface. And then I do a little intro to sort of where we are today with electronic or MIDI keyboards 
and I actually do a live demo of cable hookup. For those of you who have not done this sort of thing before, the idea of hooking up both the audio and the MIDI cables from your keyboard to your interface and into your computer to make sure that everything is set up right. And I do that from both the keyboard side and the interface side, so I show how it's done on the, the computer side as well. And then I go through some pro tips for recording electronic or MIDI keyboards, and I have a sort of a sidebar presentation on getting the best, most realistic sounds from your MIDI keyboards and the virtual instruments, which is typically how MIDI keyboards are used nowadays to play sounds back from virtual instruments. And then we wrap up with the recording assignment so you can take all this stuff and put it to use in your own studio. All right, we're up to week six now. And that's all about drums and percussion. And this is one of the longest and certainly one of the most detailed modules in the program. And I talk, first of all, about drums. I've had the pleasure of working with some phenomenal session drummers here in Nashville and lots and lots of different drum configurations over the decades. So I go into a lot of detail there about selection uh, for mics on the different parts of the kit, about mic placement, I go through some very interesting uh, drum recording products that are out there. And I talk about some settings for front end gear and that kind of thing. Because I have worked with a lot of session drummers and worked in Nashville for many years, I also talk about some pro tips for working with a click or metronome track, which takes a little bit of science as well as art. I have a, a live drum miking demo with a session drummer, Chip Abernathy, who I have used on many, many, many recordings here in Nashville. Chip and I talk a lot about the drummer philosophy and what things look like from the drummer's perspective. And I also talk about some articles that I've written on drum stuff in Drum Magazine. And then there's some bonus material. I talk about the drumming side of things with Chip and also a bunch of photos that I took with Ace Session drummer Ron Krasinski, another very, very well-respected, well-known drummer here in Nashville who I use a lot. And then we wrap up Module 9, the recording drums, with some assignment for you to do at home. And then Module 10, the last piece of the presentation part of Week 6, is a real quick 10-minute video about the setup for recording percussion, a couple of recommendations I make on uh, mic selection and also placement, and then wrap up with the homework assignment for you. We finish up the program and also Week 6 with a module called The Finish Line. And this is where I have a little bit of a questionnaire for you and some reminders about a lot of the things that we've gone through in the program and also instruct you to re-record now the benchmark recording that you did six weeks earlier at the beginning of the program using all of the knowledge that you've learned to see how things have changed and how the quality of your recordings has gone up. And I guarantee you if you go through all of this material that I've just gone over now, over the six weeks of the program, you will see a very, very radically significant improvement in your recordings. So that's the whole thing in a real quick nutshell. If you've got any further questions, you can certainly go to the website for this program, which is www.recordingturbocharge.com. All strung together, one word, recordingturbocharge.com. And you can also email me if you've got any further questions beyond that. And that's at fet at azaleamusic.com. That's F-E-T-T -T at azalea, A-Z-A-L-E-A, -E music.com. I look forward to hearing from you, and I'd love to see you in class.